Greetings, programs. This is Wretch, and welcome back to Shadowrun Dragonfall. In the last episode, we took care of everything at the bank job, and it looks like Blitz has finally settled his debts until the next time he brings up something horrible that's going to compromise us. Now, it looks like we have one more quest that we need to do, which is take the U-Bond to Frankenfurter Tor. I kind of forget what quest that actually is. Let's go ahead and board the train. Frankenfurter tour to meet Luca Dewar's team. Okay, that's when I, um, yeah, Wretch has to go and deal with that. So I want to get all of these quests dealt with before we take care of anything mainline with Paul. So um, I'm going to be traveling with this team. Can't fight, do with, or can't uh, deal with any of mine. As you bond hunched toward the Frankenfurter tour, you tug idly at the fabric of your maintenance uniform. You found it in a duffel bag on your seat when you boarded, along with a note from Dewar to put it on before your arrival. The moment you step off this train, the note said, your trial run begins. You are to rendezvous with the rest of your team, reconnoiter the building, and plant the uh, specified devices in Aleshire's suite. Beyond that, your approach will be left to you. Do not disappoint us. You are being watched. So this is our try out pretty much for whatever this stuff is from Dewar that I remember we were talking about we we're talking to him in the coffee shop so I'm not sure what kind of shenanigans we've got ourselves into or if it's even that is a big troll as you emerge from the dingy confines of the U-Bond terminal and step into the light of day you find yourself confronted by a wall of muscle and a knight errant uniform and how you're with maintenance it isn't a question. He stands impassively, waiting for a response. Uh, yes, sir. Have you seen any other maintenance, guy maintenance guys around here? Yeah, they've been trickling in over the last 15 minutes or so. I've already done a security check on your entire crew. Everything checked out, so you're good to head on to the building whenever you want. Hmm. Well, thanks for your time. He nods at you. Have a good one. Okay, so he'll be right there at the door. And hello there. A young dwarf looks up at you, wide-eyed with apprehension. From the way that she's fidgeting, you can tell that she's terrified. She bites her lower lip, eyes darting from side to side. Finally, she takes a step towards you. Uh, hello? Are you Mr. Wretch? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Wretch. I take it you're on my maintenance crew? Yeah, uh... Yeah, I am. My name is Jana. She tries on a smile. It falls away almost immediately. Good to meet you, Jana. Are the others still on their way? Uh, no. They uh, sort of jumped the gun a little. They're already inside. Great. That's just great. The dwarf wrings her hands. I'm sorry. I told them to wait, but they didn't listen. They just muscled on past me and waltzed through the front door. Hmm... All right, calm down. I see that you have a toolbox. Are you a rigger or something? She swallows. Well, uh, no. I'm not like you. Not like the others. You should probably know that. Then what are you like? A normal person with a boyfriend and a cat and a crappy apartment. I'm not a career com criminal, criminal is what I'm saying. I'm just an electrician. Hmm. Okay. Well, this may be part of the part of the uh, initiation. That's all right. Don't worry. I'll look after you. The fear drains from her face. She looks exhausted. Thank you. I, I really, really mean that. She's cute for a dwarf, too. She's got that nice little blue streak right there. I'll try to take care of myself as best I can. I don't want to be a burden. I brought my taser, and I have a little holdout pistol for self-defense, but I've never fired at a living thing before, let alone a person. I'm really hoping that I won't have to. I understand. Now, you said that our pe teammates are already inside. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I watched them storm through the front doors of the building that we're going to hit about ten minutes ago. Uh, a lot can happen in ten minutes. Uh, they'll still be on the first floor. Nobody's getting upstairs until I bypass the security locks on the elevator. That's why I decided to wait for you out here. I figured that they couldn't get too far ahead of us if I didn't go inside with them. That's good thinking, Jonna. Thanks. I just hope they don't screw things up in there. All that I want is to get this thing over with and get back home. Yeah, right there with you. Let's head inside. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Another mouth to feed. And Jana's avatar does not look like her picture whatsoever. 
let's zoom out here just a little bit and a mid-level corporate compound complete with living spaces on the upper levels hello there kids actually you know what let's walk around here just don't you have somewhere to be oh that must be one of our watchers okay let's go ahead and enter the complex then interesting so we do have eyes on us as you step through the door you find yourself confronted by a pair of men wearing the same kind of uniform that you are judging by their expressions there is no love lost between the two hearing the door swing open they turn to face you the shorter of the two a human with arcane symbols tastefully embossed on her embossed on into his belt glares at you you're here finally you brought our little mouse of an electrician with you better late than never but not much better you're tardy enough as it is he jerks his thumb at the elf standing beside him. I'll leave it to you to keep our pack mule in line. The elf's lips curl into a snarl. What luxurious hair. Hanging from his back is a bulging pack that looks incredibly heavy. His broad shoulders sag under the weight of whatever's inside. He's dumb as a post, but he can lift heavy things. Might not be bad in a fight either, at the very least. He can soak up a, full bullet, a few bullets for the rest of us. Staring daggers at the mage, he spits out a long string of foreign words in a single susurrant breath. The sound of it is lovely, but his expression leaves little doubt that the message behind the words is an ugly one. Oh, and I hope that you can speak. Sparathiel, he shakes his head in disgust. Damn useless immigrants. Hmm. Do us all a favor and keep your opinions to yourself. The corner of his mouth lifts into an ugly smirk. You may be the leader of this team, but I'll speak my mind whenever I please. Get used to it. Oh, and by the way, think you could have gotten here any later, pal? I've got an appointment meeting to get to, and if I'm late, the crap is going to hit the... This isn't getting us to your meeting any faster. Thank you, Jenna. He flashes a hateful glance at the dwarf, then turns his attention back to you. No, it isn't. So let's get to the penthouse and plant the cameras. I'll mask them against detection, and then we can go all our separate ways. The elf mutters something under his breath and hitches the bulky pack up a little higher on his back. His muscles bulge under the strain of it. Hmm... That pat looks heavy. I can help you with it if you want. The elf brings un uncomprehendingly and takes a half step back. I told you, he can't understand a word you're saying. Nothing's come out of his mouth with that pigeon drivel the elves call a language. A tear tongai dialect, if I'm not mistaken. I wish they'd do us all a favor and go back. Can you understand me at all? The muscle tones in the elvish tongue pour out of his mouth again, but you can't make out a word. His dialect is quite foreign. It's unlike the form of Sparathiel spoken by the elves of Tir Na Nog. The elf falls silent. He looks just as frustrated as the mage is. Hmm. Well, just relax and concentrate on the job. The words don't seem to have much impact. The elf's scowl deepens. I get the distinct impression that none of you actually want to be here, but we've got a job to do, so you're all going to have to suck it up and deal. The mage leers at you. Wonderful pep talk. Really, really magnificent. I can see why you were placed in charge of this run. Now can we please get moving? I don't have all day. We know, we know, you have a meeting. I can get us into Elshire's apartment, but there are a few things that we'll need to do first. Yes, I want to punch the human. If you can get me to a building access panel that's on the same circuit as the penthouse, I should be able to put its security system into maintenance mode. The job will take some creative rewiring, well, that and whatever's in the pack that the elf is carrying, our employers gave me the semantics. And do you know how we'll find that access panel, Mouse? Quit calling me that. She takes a moment to calm herself. And yes, I do. That's an, there's an access panel in one of the mid-range apartments on the same floor. My contact gave me a key code that should get us in. You've said should twice already. That makes me feel uneasy. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. It's the plan that I was given and we're stuck with it. Unless you have a better idea, we'll just have to follow our instructions and hope for the best. She turns to face you. Get me to a building access terminal on this floor and I can rewire the elevator. That's the first thing that we need to do. Once we're upstairs, we can use the code I was giving and rewire Aleshire's security system and we hide the cameras in his apartment. Her brow furrows. Well, that's the theory anyway. Alright then, let's go. I don't want to do the typical... Uh, you know, Star Wars, I have a bad feeling about this because then something bad always happens. Stressed suit. What does he have to say? Hello there, fashionable orc. 
The well-dressed orc stops his pacing to stare at you as you approach. Heavy worry lines etch his forehead and his eyes are bloodshot. He looks like he hasn't slept in a month. I don't want to be rude, but I'm a little busy right now. If this is about building maintenance, take it someplace else. James's cheeks flush red. He takes a step forward. Watch it. You don't get to talk down to me like the orc bristles. Like a janitor? Yes, I do, because that's what you are. If you want to keep wearing that uniform, you better watch the attitude. Now, isn't there a floor that you could be cleaning or something? I've got a lot to wor on my mind to worry about. Important things. And I don't want to be bothered. Let's use Charisma 4. Hey, man, relax. I'm sure that it's all going to work itself out. With a visible effort, he calms himself. Look, sorry. I'm not trying to be unpleasant. It's just that I have a huge presentation to give to the board in 20 minutes. I stayed up all night practicing it. And now I'm so tired that I can't even remember my own name. That's rough. He shakes his head miserably. I'm going to botch this, and the worst part is, most of those bastards will assume that's because I'm an orc. They already make jokes behind my back. After this, it's going to get a lot worse. Well, that's tough, man. Best of luck to you. He scowls and continues to pace. Hmm. So, let's... Okay, there's an open door. Do a little... Okay, let's do some inspection. A boutique food kiosk. The sign out front advertises a variety of locally scoured foodstuffs, all of them terribly overpriced. Let's look at the food on offer. Glancing at a self-served refrigerated section of the kiosk, you find a variety of sandwiches wrapped in slick plastic. You can eat for a week for the price of one of these things. Ew. Yep, can't go wrong with some of that stuff. Wow, this is a big place. A tailor? Because I really don't know... The saleswoman expressions brightens at your approach. Welcome to Dunkley's Fine Clothiers. Are you shopping for a suit? A fashionable business suit made of ballistic cloth catches your eye. It'd be a simple matter to slide it on under your baggy maintenance overalls. Yeah, let me see that suit. Ah, good choice. Style and safety. You have a good eye. She takes your arm. Here, let me show you to a dressing room. Wow, 15. Lends an air of quiet authority and class. Let's not worry about that right now. Let's inspect the rest of this and see what we can do. Jaina studies the junction box for a moment, then turns to face you. See that guard in the hallway? Well, he was standing next to a junction box like this one. Looks like they're both on the same circuit, too. So? So I could use this one to overload the one that the guard is standing by. She looks at the junction box again and nods. Yeah, I could feed a nice power spike into the one from here. You know, if you wanted me to. And what would that do? Make a loud bang, and arc enough voltage in that hallway to knock out a gang of trolls. Yeah, I'd rather you didn't. We'll find another way past the guard. Yeah, fine by me. Just thought I'd offer. Want to see what all the options are first before we do anything. Because I don't want to go off half-cocked unless, you know, don't have to break out the weaponry unless absolutely necessary. What we got here? A tech vendor? And a corporate woman. A well-groomed corporate couple stand in the corner, browsing racks of pamphlets about neural enhancement headwear. The woman's head turns at the sound of your approach. Upon seeing your uniform, her nose wrinkles. Oh, hello. Are we in your way? We wouldn't want to keep you from your work. Her spray tan husband chimes in. Right, the last thing we'd want is to come between you people and whatever it is that you do. Hmm... Everything's fine. We're just doing routine maintenance checks. Ah, well, don't let us get in your way. Uh, you're not in the way at all. Say, what are you looking at there? This. He holds up a display model that they were inspecting so that you can see it. A small chip along with a glossy, attractive information sheet. It's a pediatric Skillwire Plus system for our son. Our little Hans deserves the very best, and he'll need it if he's going to compete with his classmates at the Academy. That means headwear from Augmentech. We may not be as rich as the other parents, but this at least is something that we can do. Hmm. Now, this stuff isn't cheap. You must be very devo devoted parents. I'd like to think that we are, and no, it isn't cheap. But unfortunately, these sorts of enhancements have become nearly mandatory at top-tier schools like the Academy. Our son's classmates come from affluent families. Even the least successful of Hans's peers has a pediatric encephalon, and it ranges on up from there. 
The Academy grades on a curve. If we were to send Hans to school without any enhancements, we'd be setting him up for failure. What about the kids that can't afford cyber surgery? The scholarship students, you mean? He pauses, considering. Well, I suppose that someone has to be at the bottom of the pile. But yes, that someone won't be our Hans. It's an unfortunate situation, of course, he cocks his head apologetically. But then, that's the world we live in, isn't it? Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and play with these guys. Yeah, it is. You wouldn't want Hans to wind up at the bottom of the heap, like me. I should say not. You seem like a good man, and I don't mean to insult you, but you know how cutthroat it is out there. Hans will have every advantage, even if I have to mortgage the house to provide it to him. That's big of you. I should get back to work. She waves to you. Goodbye now. Interesting. Let's look at the tech vendor. The woman behind the counter smiles at you, her cheeks dimpling. Good afternoon, and welcome to Augment Tech, the boutique that makes a better you of you. Her voice is overflowing with forced cheerfulness. Idly, you wonder how many times she has to give this exact speech every day. Tell me how I can help you today. Yeah, I might be in the market for some cyberware. Then you've come to the right place, she gestures to the terminal in front of you. Please feel free to browse our catalog. We have a huge stock of performance enhancing augmentations to make you into the person you've always dreamed you can be. Yeah, let's look at the terminal. Scaling over the tastefully designed catalog, you find that most of Augmentech's stock consists of overpriced cosmetic cyberware, metabolic tweaks to help burn away cellulite, um, ruthenium polymer hair extensions, ultra-expensive leonization treatments aimed at wealthy... that word. <laughs> Toward the back of the catalog, you find some more practical chrome, but nothing that a shadow runner would want. From designer replacement limbs to nephretic screens for alcoholics, Augmentech carries the very best and fashionable implants for the ultra-rich. This is kind of like Sky Mall. The mental enhancement section is a little more promising, but you don't see anything that couldn't you couldn't already find in the Cruise Bazaar. You're about to turn away when an ad on the last page grabs your attention. Newest iteration of the um, Encephalon system, complete with an integrated math SPU. The Encephalon Next, as it's called, is a bleeding-edge commercial-grade tech. Not non-compete agreements prevent it from being sold at most stores, but you found one that carries it. Hey, this headwear looks interesting. Mind if I take a look? She glances at the item on the screen. Looking at the new Encephalon, huh? Good choice. Our regional supervisor has one, and it is amazing. Totally worth the price. And what's the price? It doesn't say on the screen. We're doing a special right now. Yours for only 250 new yen. Ooh, that's actually really cheap. Okay, sign me up. That's wonderful. Good choice. I'll just swipe your cred stick and I'll print up your purchase order. Okay, where do I get it installed? Is your dock in the back or something? Her brow furrows. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid that you don't understand. We're a boutique shop, not a cyber surgery clinic. We can sell you the device and have it sent to the clinic of your choice for installation, but we don't do the surgery here. Of course, your doctor will bill you separately for installation, but this way you can ensure that the procedure is carried out whenever you're the most comfortable. Hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead. I'll still take it. Please have it sent to the triage cyber clinic in the cruise bazaar. She swipes your cred stick and punches a few buttons on her PDA. A flimsy slip of paper spills out of the terminal you're standing at and into your hand. The saleswoman beams at you. You are now the proud owner of a Cephalon Next and will have it sent to the triage cyber clinic as per your request. When you arrive, just show the doctor or a member of his staff the proof of purchase that you're holding, and he'll know what to fetch for you. Mm, thanks. Thank you, sir, and have a great day. Interesting. Wonder what's what that is all about. Now, I want to go through this door that the orc was pacing out in front of. Hello. Knight Errant Enforcer. The guard steps forward, interposing himself between you and the terminal. Your security clearance doesn't authorize you to be in here. Ooh. We're doing a we're doing a building wide maintenance sweep of all major systems. Want us to take a look at your terminal? You know I can't do that. You don't have the appropriate clearance to touch this terminal, let alone service it. Besides, it's been running great since that other maintenance team worked on it last week. I'm surprised that you don't have that in your records. 
You know how it is with us in management. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. It's ridiculous. Story of my life. You have my sympathies. Eh, we'll be on our way then. Take it easy. Interesting. Okay, so we can't... We could kill him and take care of that. But I want to be a little more subtle. Though that terminal would be nice to do some decking. Let's chat with the guard here. Hello there, guard. The guard's stance shifts slightly as you approach. Can I help you? Yeah, could you open the door to the utility area? We have some work to do in there. You can't read the guard's expression through his mirrored face mask, but his body language makes it clear that he's staring at you. The door is security-coded Delta Grade. Your idea says that you're just a Theta, so no, I can't open the door. You're not listening. We have work to do in there. I heard him loud and clear, Mop Jockey. Now you listen to me. Nobody without Delta clearance gets through this door, period. I suggest that you talk to management. If you really do need to be in here, they'll upgrade your clearance. Otherwise, piss off. Hmm. Let's try our charisma. Cool down. We're on the same side here. This is a dispatch problem, I'm sure of it. I don't envy you guys having to work with them every day. The guard's shoulders relax. Yeah, I hear you. I swear it's amazing that anyone gets anything done at all around here. Tell you what, you don't need to go all the way back to management. Just call in and get your clearance changed. I'll let you guys in as soon as the authorization comes through. Hmm. Now we can choose our security etiquette. Now, I'd better go take care of this in person, but one thing before I go. Instead of this week's protocols, they sent us out last week's. Anything changed since then? He shakes his head. Unbelievable. You know, it makes my blood boil to think of how much money they make. It's people like you and me that actually keep this place running. And yet the idiots at Dispatch pull in triple what we do for sitting on their asses and fouling everything up. Right there, right there with you, man. Now, about those protocols. Yeah, let's see. They changed the emergency assistance code from November to Indigo. I think that's it. Everything else should be the same from last week. Indigo. Yeah, thanks. I better head back to management to get that clearance issue sorted. He nods sagely. Best of luck, pal. Do us all a favor and call out those idiots at dispatch. Not that it'll do any good. On second thought, don't bother saying anything. They just wind up getting another raise. Don't I know it. Take care of yourself. Yeah, you too. Interesting. Electrical junction box. So we can kill this guard. And can't go in through there. It doesn't look to be any kind of... Anything else that we can really hack into. So, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead... Take out this Knight Errant Enforcer. Oh, wait a minute. Your buddy across the way wanted me to give me... Wanted me to give me a message? Okay, I guess there was a mess up there. Status Indigo Com Compromised. Does that mean anything to you? The guard jerks upright in alarm. He said, what? Step out of my way, please. Excellent. Let's use this terminal. The terminal is logged into the building security system. It should be relatively simple to trick its threat assessment software into sending out a false positive. Let's enter the false data into the system to indicate threats coming from a far part of the complex away from the target. A few response codes flash onto the screen. Sweetness. Looks good. Zoom out a little bit more. And can we, let's talk to the stress suit again one more time. Okay. So he's just ticked off. Nothing really we can do for him there. I was thinking maybe we could buy him a sandwich, but it's expensive. And we already got the tech there. We already talked to the parents. Decent parents, like very posh, but... Ooh. Okay, both junction boxes are right there. Hmm. Take out two with one blow. Let's go ahead and use Lana's, uh... So, is it time to zap some guards? Do it. Wunderbar. So, what do we got here? A Theta key card. 
And what do we got? Utility Grid Hub. Wordlessly, Jenna pops an access panel at the base of the terminal and begins snipping wires. A few minutes later, she replaces the panel's cover and stands. Alright, that should do it. I bat past the security lock on the elevator. We're good to head upstairs. Oh, well, that was quick. I know my way around electrical systems. My father used to own rental properties all over Munich and I helped him maintain them. She smiles shyly. I've been rewiring buildings since I was a little girl. Touching. I don't know what this has to do with getting me to my meeting, but please, by all means, keep waltzing down memory lane. We'll wait. Hmm. Couldn't care less about your meeting, James, but we should keep moving all the same. James turns and stalks toward the doll doorway. The others follow behind. Interesting. And are we heading into another area of the building? Ah, so we are. Okay, guys, well, I'll go ahead and end the episode here. We have a really motley crew, but we seem to be doing what needs to be done. However, James is going to get punched or shot before the end of this, I can guarantee it. If you liked the episode, go ahead and click like down below, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. That'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.